All right, so in today's video, I wanna talk about two things. I wanna talk about the potential of a successor to the DJI FPV drone, and then I would also like to talk about these new Fat Shark Dominator goggles and their new HD system, and whether or not it's worth it to jump on that right now, giving its current state. So we're talking about two things, but primarily the DJI FPV drone. If that's something that interests you, stick around. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and if this is your first time here on the channel, we do videos just like this, we talk about unreleased products, we talk about opinions, and um, this is sort of a wish list in a sense, and then also sort of a reaction to the uh, Dominator HD system as well. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the Fat Shark Dominator HDs. And I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it because I think that it was, it's was it been hammered out over the past 24 hours yesterday. And also I just wanna make a quick mention that whoever invented a five minute timer for YouTube premieres needs to go to hell. That person has a special place in hell. So yesterday we saw a multitude of videos come out surrounding the HD Dominator FPV system. And there's been a lot of speculation that this system was in partnership with DJI. Later on, through some internet sleuths, we found out that there's a company involved called Walking Snail, which also has strong ties to Caddx. It's basically the same company as Caddx, which, as you know, Caddx makes the uh, Caddx Vista system for DJI. So they're in partnership with DJI in that sense. However, Fat Shark has denied any sort of ties or collaboration with DJI, which a lot of people have some speculation and concern that there is ties with DJI. Now these goggles are debuting for $600, so $699 I believe is what the price is on multiple sites. And the VTXs that are going to be used for this are roughly about the same price as a current Caddx Vista, which is $159. So. Pricing of the VTXs is pretty similar to DJI. The goggles, they are a little bit pricey. It's a 90 hertz refresh screen on the goggles. It's a 1080p display. They are smaller. They're pretty svelte looking. They look great. However, one major concern for me is the fact that there's still a lot that is not functioning during that demonstration. While the demonstration looked very impressive, there still was a lot that was not functional on these goggles. So. That's something to keep in mind. Their release is slated for July. However, they are on pre-order right now, which you can pay. It's not even like I'm gonna put like a little bit down on my pre-order and get my card charged later. No, you're paying the full price of the goggles straight up front, which is pretty concerning. And I think if you were considering buying these, I would probably pause a little bit and think about Fat Shark's history in the digital realm. So far, they have had two failed attempts, in my opinion, when it comes to digital. We had Frostbite, which was a failure, and then we had Sharkbite, which is now HD Zero, which I'm not saying HD Zero Sharkbite is a failure, it's just not as popular or it wasn't as good as it could have been when it was under the Sharkbite name. So just saying they've had two failed attempts and now this will be the third time, maybe third time's a charm, but that's a lot of money to gamble on a company that has a track record of not being able to deliver when it comes to digital. The other little concern for me is the fact that you're paying full price on these HD goggles, that they are not taking a deposit. It feels like you're almost crowdfunding a set of goggles. I could be wrong, but it feels sort of like a crowdfunding situation that they're wanting you to order to finish maybe the production. I don't know, 700 bucks, a lot of money. This also makes me believe that DJI is not involved because if they were involved in any way, if any way that their technology was being used, they probably would have done this pre-order a little bit differently. I also think they wouldn't have been available so late in the game, like July. They would be available much sooner and they wouldn't need our money to complete a project. That's just my opinion. If DJI was involved, it wouldn't be so much of a crowdfunding situation because DJI's got the money and if their tech's involved in any way, they're gonna wanna make sure that their name is well represented. So that also makes me believe that they're not involved with this whatsoever and this is entirely something new, maybe not necessarily new, maybe copied from DJI, but not essentially too far different, but it's definitely not DJI from what I can see anyways. 
All right, let's talk about the potential of the Avada, the DJI Avada, which has been making its round in some internal leaks. Um, I think this warrants a conversation, and I'll give you a little bit of a wish list on that as well. Okay, so I wanna say last March, this was announced, which is the DJI FPV drone. And when this was first announced, I have to say I was pretty skeptical on the DJI FPV drone itself. I just didn't think that this had a place in the market. I was strongly, strongly against it. But as I've flown it, I've grown to really love it and really enjoy flying it, you know, now that I've been able to make some tweaks and improve upon this design. Now, according to some internal documents that have been tweeted out by Osita and a couple of others, there is a code name DJI Avada. Now, we don't know a lot about what that Avada stands for. It could be new air units. It could be goggles. It could be an FPV drone. My guess is it's it's probably all of the above. Maybe Avada is just the code name for that product line. We won't really know. But if they are going to create a FPV drone or an FPV drone mini, I do have a little bit of a wish list for that. Now, anytime we start talking about wish lists, it's important to keep in mind we have to keep it as realistic as possible because we know damn well that DJI is probably gonna build the next FPV drone out of plastic. So with that being said, here's some wishes that I have for the next generation or what this Avada could be. So let's just start off with number one, which is dual cameras. So it's no big secret that the DJI FPV drone has a potato for a camera. This camera is really not all that great. I've made no big secret of that. And it's pretty much the biggest reason why people keep mounting GoPros and other action cameras on top of there. And that's also the reason why I created this, the FPV helmet, so that way you could safely mount a GoPro, an action camera, or whatever else that you want it to the top of your FPV drone without any sort of vibration. With the new version of the DJI FPV Mini or whatever it is it will be, I think they need to go back to the basics and have two cameras if they're going to do FPV. We need to have a camera that we can adjust the angle of attack on for our FPV camera, and then the same needs to go for the camera that's actually filming. I think having two different cameras will alleviate two of the problems that we were facing, which was one, if we were filming in D-Cine-like, which honestly on the FPV drone felt more like log. It was all washed out and really hard to uh, film with and fly. It was just, it was a disaster. Also, it will help improve the latency factor, which there wasn't a crazy amount of latency on the FPV drone. I felt like it was pretty good for the most part, but it could definitely get better. And knowing that this will no longer be filming, capturing footage as well, will also help reduce that latency factor. And uh, I think that would be a huge win. Okay, let's talk about the repairability factor next. The FPV drone is probably one of the most complicated quads to fix. And, and this is coming from somebody who builds their own FPV drones, but I've broken now three of these, and each time I've broke these, I have attempted to fix this, and I would take things apart, and it would never go back the same way. Matter of fact, when I finally did fix one of these, I had a couple of screws left over. Structurally, it felt solid, but there were screws left over. I have no idea where those screws go. But each time I've ever crashed this, I've always just sent it into DJI because I always felt like it was just way too difficult to repair. For a beginner or an intermediate person, this is a lot, a, a lot going on here. So I think anything that DJI can do to make it a little bit more repairable, sell us additional parts, that we can fix these ourselves is going to make this even better um, than what it is, even if it is made out of plastic. And let's just face it, they're not going to use carbon fiber, guys. They're just not gonna use carbon fiber because carbon fiber costs a lot of money and it's just not conducive to business. So they're going to continue making it out of plastic because they know we're gonna crash it. They know we're gonna buy DJI Care Refresh and it's a vicious cycle. So the sooner we just embrace that, the better off we be or just don't buy it and build your own. All right, let's talk about the tuning factor because this is something that DJI needs to improve on with the next rendition. So much like any quad that you build, you can tune your quads, you can make it fly the way you want, and you can adjust the PIDs and rates on this, or I should say, let me let me rephrase that. You can adjust the rates on this drone, but you cannot adjust the PIDs. And anytime you make modifications, such as putting these prop adapters on, you put a GoPro on, or even you put the 3PV mount on here, it's going to fly a little bit different. Maybe not for the better either. So it would be great to see that DJI would introduce some way to tune these to be a little bit better when modifications are made. That's one of the great things about FPV. It's really, 
it's first person view, but I feel like it's more of a customized flight. Everybody flies different, everybody has their own style. So anything they can do to allow us to accommodate the things that we have changed on these quads, I think would be a great addition. So that's honestly really it I have for a wish list. And there's no photos on Drone XL for what the Avada could be. The other you know, potential that it could be is a new set of DJI goggles that do take advantage of dual band. Because right now, the old FPV goggles are only a single band, which is 5.8, which also means that you aren't getting the maximum amount of range. So even if it is not, even if it is not a new FPV drone, I would be really happy if it was a set of goggles, because for me, that would be amazing to have a smaller, much more compact set of goggles that take advantage of a dual band and then also introduce smaller air units that are uh, dual band as well, which means we would get more range, we would have less breakup. It's just going to overall enhance what they already have with the FPV system. So there's a lot of potential, but I would say keep your eyes peeled around July. It's sort of weird, the timing with the HD Dominators becoming available in July, these leaks really point towards July, so we'll have to keep our eyes peeled and uh, see if it happens. Um, I, for one, this is one leak that I'm, I'm good with is when it comes to FPV stuff, because I'm always breaking, buying, and I just literally just bought another set of FPV goggles because I gave a set of goggles away and I haven't been able to really fly my FPV drone because I hate unbinding and rebinding air units. So I bought another set of FPV goggles, which I'll be really upset if a new set of goggles comes out. Well, I won't be upset. It's not a, it's not a waste of money. It's, it's definitely not a waste of money, but um, it would really suck if it came out like next month or the month after. But anyways, let me know what your thoughts are on both the HD Dominators and the potential of the uh, Avada from DJI. Let me know what you hope it would be. Would you be just happy with a set of goggles from DJI, maybe new air units, or do you want a new FPV drone? I know a lot of people probably really do want a new FPV drone. I just don't think it'll be what they want it. It definitely isn't gonna be any more durable. Uh, that's for sure, that's just not DJI's track record. But let me know in the comments section below. Either way, I'm really excited for this summer if it is the uh, summer of FPV. That's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Stay original. Checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me. My attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success is only made them envious, they got upset.